السلام عليكم فيميا فيلير مود اند افكت اناليسيس وات وي هاف تو نو اباوت فيميا ام جوينج تو سامرايز ات ان فور بوينتس بوينت نمبر 1 ديفينيشن وات از فيميا اور فيلير مود اند افكت اناليسيس ات از ا ريسك مانجمنت تول used to anticipate the area of failure in some processes and how to, do, to deal with that failure if already happened. So we are using it to predict where the failure can occur, how the failure can occur, what areas failure can occur in, and how to deal with that failure if it occurred. Number two, it was first used during 1960 in the aerospace industry exactly in Apollo mission. Number three, what's the differences between FEMIA and root cause analysis? FEMIA is a proactive step or process or tool. We are anticipating the failure while root cause analysis is interactive. When the failure happened, we will study why that failure happened. So, FEMIA will anticipate the failure. Failure never happened. So, do not use FEMIA for something already happened, for failure already happened. If the failure already happened, you have to use root cause analysis like in Sentinel event. But FEMIA, you are anticipating. Failure never happened, but you are anticipating it and you are preparing yourself to deal with that failure. Number four, which is the most important thing today, is the steps. Steps of FEMIA are like that. Number one, detect the process you are going to study. You are anticipating a failure will occur in that process. How to choose that process? You try to choose the uh, high potential process. Process that affects the patient or the facility itself. You can use the high risk, high volume, problem prone process and you can study your FEMIA on. Number two, you have to select or detect the team. And the team should be, as we said before in central event, it should be multidisciplinary. People concerning with that process, we have to choose peoples from them. For example, I'm going to do FEMIA on pharmacy or giving a medication to the patient. So I have to take people from the pharmacy. Nurses should be included. Physicians are also included. And even medical supply, you can choose some people from them. Step number three, make a diagram to tell us what are the steps of that process. So the diagram or flow chart will show you the steps and the bottleneck. You can anticipate any failure in any step of the process. Number four, try to brainstorm the kind or types of failure in each step. For example, step number three, it can go failure like that, like that, like that, and the causes will be like that, like that, like that. Five, identify the failure causes why that failure happened. And we are asking ourselves here why it goes wrong. Why this process or these steps goes wrong. Number six, identify the failure effect. What's the effect of failure if it happened? We will ask ourselves what would happen if failure occurred. Would the patient get injured or die or the system collapsed? or what is uh, going on if the failure happened. Then number seven, estimate the likelihood of the uh, uh, this step of the failure. Three things we are going to estimate here, the likelihood of occurrence, detection, severity. We will call them RBN, that we call RBN number, the risk priority number. So the risk priority number we are going to multiply the detection. How can we detect the failure, the uh, uh, severity, and the effect? 
So likelihood and severity and detection. Every one of them, you're going to give it a score from one to 10, while one is low score and 10 is the highest score. How can we give a score one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on? It's by the team itself. The team will do consensus on the number. Is it good for us or bad for us? If it's good, we will give a low score. If it's high, we will give high score. Then the next step, which is number eight, we will detect the RB number, RBN number, risk priority number, but by multiplying detection by severity by occurrence. After you have the risk priority number, you will get, of course, ranks. For example, high number numbers and low numbers. You will start to improve the highest first because it carries more risk to the patient or the visitors or the staff or even the facility. So the biggest number, take them and put an action plan for them. One step by one step or one number by one number. For example, if you have five steps and step number one, you detect the risk priority number when you multiply detection with occurrence multiplied by the severity and it was 400. The second step is 100. The third step is 260. The fourth is 50 and the last is 410. You have to rank them starting from the 410, then the 400, then the 260, then the 100, then the 50. I will start to work on all the five steps, but starting with the highest first. That's called 410. This one is, for example, uh, the patient will go uh, to OR, for example, and we will do wrong uh, procedure for the patient. So, and it will take the 410, what you will do? You have to do to put an action plan for this one. For example, we have to do patient identification and train everyone about patient identification. Then number two, you have to have a surgical safety checklist. For example, you have to put the action plan and in each step of the action plan, tell us who will do it, when he will do it, how he will do it, and what's the evidence of compliance. By now, we gave you a very short information about FEMIA. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.